How's y'all's day going? Leave me a comment. Let me know how your day is going. Mine is actually going fantabulous. Thank you for asking. So, Gosh. Mm. Mm. I could wake up the whole state of Florida right now. I have enough energy flowing through my body right now to power Miami for about 35 minutes probably. So let's see if we can go find a large mouth. <laughs> oh, there we go. I need car keys. Car keys. There you go. It feels a lot better here than it does in Alabama. It feels a lot better. So hopefully the bass feel a lot better here. It's a little overcast. It's a little stormy. The crazy thing is you only really need three lures where I'm here. You can get away with like a top water, a like inline spinner bait, or a little small swim bait, or like a rattle trap. But we're gonna go catch a bass. Literally right back there on the other side of that fence. We're just gonna drive around the fence to get on the other side of it. Had our first bite there. I know it's super loud, but we had our first bass. It was a pretty good one too from what I saw of it. It looked like it could have been about four or five pounds maybe. So, I mean, that would have been an amazing fish to start off, but we got to keep it going. All right, first spot was a little tough. It, we have a good overcast day today and a lot of wind blowing. So that just kind of Told me to throw on a spinnerbait. You know, it's a perfect spinnerbait day back home. And I was like, these bass down here should like spinnerbaits too. Tied a spinnerbait on, went back down to the canal, fished a little bit, had a huge fish come out, huge. I mean, probably like four or five pounds and missed it. But we're on the way to another spot. I fished that canal last year and I caught a couple fish out of it. Then this place that I'm going to now, I fished a couple years ago and it was on fire. Also, it's cold. It's like middle of January right now. It's so like, it might not be the greatest time to do this, but these fish are like super aggressive. So we're gonna make it happen. Can I have a sausage, egg and cheese croissant and a large vanilla iced coffee? All right, so like 100 tries at stopping later, we finally have our next spot. It's just so hard because my brain is so scattered. It's hard for me to find like a good spot because everything looks good. I'm like, oh, I bet you I can catch one there. I bet you I can catch one there. I bet you I can catch two right here. Let's see, we're gonna walk a little bit, see if we can see them. It is cold out, so I'm not sure like if they go to deeper water or what kind of happens in that situation. All right, super clear water, super shallow water. We're gonna see if we can't find somewhere that looks a little bit better. If not, we just keep driving. Uh, this is just kind of the first like easy access spot that I found. So I'm sure a lot of other people found it too. So last time I was here, I know that these bass really like cover. Like cover is their, their main deal. I just feel like I'm gonna, whoa, I almost went down there. I just have a feeling I'm gonna walk up on a gator for some reason. Yeah, I don't like this. There's no movement or anything to that water. It's just kind of stagnant and I don't see too much. And I feel like our most promising spot is gonna be this little pool right here. And I mean, you can see where I parked at. You can see where the main highway is. So literally anybody fishing in this area is probably gonna come straight to this spot. I think they're all still worth checking out because these fish do seem to be pretty aggressive. I mean, with the amount of water here, you can pretty much get off a plane or get off a flight and catch a fish within the next five minutes. Oh, there's three of them right there. Spot number three of the day. Uh, we're pretty much fishing the same like canal system. It's all one big canal. The past two spots that we've been to have been all part of the same one. The last one we saw a couple fish in, but they were like, nah. So we're gonna try this one out. Ooh, there are a lot of pads over here. Right there, he hammered it. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Dude, that scared the crap out of me. Well, we caught our bass, boys. God, dog. Dude, that thing. 
Oh my gosh. And that is 100% without a doubt the biggest. Oh, it just broke my line too. Yeah. 100% without a doubt the biggest peacock bass I have ever caught right there. Gosh. Whew, that was fun. Dude, first cast on this spot. He like hammered it. Oh my gosh, dude, these things are ferocious. Guys, this is a fish we drove 14 hours to catch yesterday. Here's the secret bass that we were looking for. The peacock bass. We're gonna get a weight on them. This thing hit my little spinner bait, or my little swim bait observation. He knocked a stutter into me, if that makes sense. He knocked a stutter into me. That's, that's how, the only way I know how to describe it. Gosh, that is a lot of fun. We're gonna weigh them and then we're gonna throw them right back so we can catch some more. Oh my gosh. My thumb is gonna be bleeding after one. Let's see. Almost a three pounder. 296, almost a three. We're gonna go put them back and hopefully catch some more after we retie. Stay tuned. All right, guys, we are finally on the board. So the bass that I was talking about was actually a peacock bass. We're down here in South Florida for three days and we have three days to make it happen. I started out this morning really close to like the Miami peacock stuff and I was like, yeah, this isn't working. It's just cold, it's cold today. They're not as, I don't know, normally when you walk up to a spot, you can just see them in the water, but I've been to four or five different places, which I mean, that's not a lot compared to how many opportunities there are down here. I've been to a couple places, didn't see anything. So I was like, we're just gonna go on a drive. Once you get over here to the Everglades side of South Florida, it's pretty much fair game. Like wherever you go, you never know what you're gonna come up again. You never know what you're gonna catch. There's snakehead. There's literally anything in these waters. We're gonna drive on down to the end of this road, and I think there's a couple more like little bridges and places where they should be able to collect up on like bait fish and stuff like that, and see what we can do. That one that we just caught scared the absolute crap out of me. I've been fishing for four hours without a bite, and you already know how that goes. And then imagine like a four pound bass that just shotgunned a monster energy or like a Red Bull. That's what those fish fight like. All right, seems like the wind has died down just a little bit. So what I'm doing today, guys, I'm pretty much just gonna drive down this road. And I mean, we probably have about five or six miles of just canal. And anytime I hit something different like this, there's a little bit of like a riprap bank over there. We're gonna fish it. And we're gonna get, you know, six, seven casts at it just to see. We got this light line on the spinner reel so we can really reach over to the other side good and just explore, see what we can get into today. This is, oh, there we go. That's one. We got 15 pound test. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to go up a little bit higher. Hopefully we don't break this off. So we're gonna loosen up our drag a little bit. And then I do not know what this is either. Um, I think that's a peacock. Oh no, don't get in rocks. Yeah, peacock. That's a pretty one. Come here. <laughs> Yes, sir. That worked out perfect. Don't you love it when a plan just comes together? Boom. That's peacock number two of the day. Whew, that's fun. He crushed the swim bait kind of on the fall. See ya. Dude, those fish are just so aggressive. It doesn't make sense to me how aggressive those fish are. And then just to think that they're like not even supposed to be here. You know, those are non-native as they call them. That's fish number two. Off of this spot we decided to pull up on. Like I was saying before, I was so kindly interrupted by that fish. We have a little bit too light of tackle for these fish today. Like ones that are that size, we should be fine with, but no way. Oh, I was about to say. No, that little pounder, pound and a half range. But if we start getting up into like the fours and five, then we probably need to upgrade some of our tackle just because you see that other one popped off when we got it up to the bank, this 15 pound line for as hard as these fish fight and you know, hit your lure. It's really not enough, but this is what we got. I think we have a little bit heavier stuff in the truck. So if we need to, we'll just, you know, take 40, 50 yards off of this one and put in something a little bit heavier. Just throwing like a little underspin swim bait today and done the trick on two of them. And I think I had a bite just a second ago. So we'll see if we can hook up on a few more. There we go. That's a good one. I don't know what that is, but whatever it is, big. Oh my gosh. Dude, we're gonna have to bring him all the way across the canal. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, this thing is fun. I 
think it's a peacock. I mean, the head shapes kind of feel like one, but they're not coming up and jumping or anything like that, so it's kind of hard to tell. Whenever he gets over here to this bank, he's probably gonna try to take off. Whatever it is, it's good. I know that for, oh, wow. Okay, chill, chill, chill. Whatever it is, we wanna land it. At least we wanna see it first. Okay. <laughs> I think it's a big peacock. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh my gosh, that's a really good one. Dude. Okay. Stop Dude, that is a big female peacock. Look at that. That is a big one. That is a big peacock. Welcome back to another video, guys. Say it with me. Three, two, one. <laughs> Larry catches the biggest bass. Four pounds, four ounces. We're gonna call that a new PB. I broke my PB. <laughs> Let's go. We're gonna put this, we're gonna put it back and try to catch another one. Stay tuned. That is awesome. That is so cool. I don't know who invented peacock bass or the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for making peacock bass. Um, I'm not as educated on them as I should be to know what they're necessarily good for, but they are a lot of fun to catch. And if I was absolutely starving, I would love to come out, catch a few, and then eat them. But I probably would never do that. It's better stuff to eat. A 4-4. Four, four. That's, I think that probably is the biggest one. I've only caught, I've only been down here one other time and done this, but that one's definitely the biggest that I've caught by far. And it puts us at three on the day so far. And a lot of smiles. I mean, fishing would solve so many of the world's problems. Like if everybody had a fishing rod, there would never be wars. There would never be none of that. And I'm 100% guaranteed of that. Like if everybody could come to Florida and peacock fish for three days and catch a hundred a day, a hundred like that a day if that was sustainable and everybody could do it i promise you we would not oh bird that bird almost got got right there um i promise you we would not have all like the world problems and people trying to do mean stuff to each other like all that stuff will go out of the window and we just live in a perfect society perfect world all right we have made it to the last body of water for today and we found a golf course on google Maps, so we're gonna fish this thing and hopefully we'll hook into a few. I think I'm gonna throw this little rattle trap. I had pretty good luck on the underspin all day, but I feel like I have, I can catch a bigger variety of fish out here on the rattle trap. So stay tuned and hopefully we can hook into a few big ones or maybe we hook into like a record breaking peacock in the golf course. Cause I mean, peacock bass are already aggressive. Golf courses are already good fishing. You mix the two together in theory, it should just be like a, should be an awesome day. So stay tuned. All right, so we tried the golf course ponds a little bit. A couple other ponds in the area didn't have any luck and wasn't really seeing too much. And I was like, you know, why leave fish to find fish? So we came back over here and we're gonna hopefully catch a couple more out of this spot. now giving my soul i pour it out been honest before what you're seeing now back when i couldn't afford a house i used to sleep in the prius no heater on site at my campus dropped out for a job i just couldn't manage was racking a debt made it hard to see family i ran out of panic i started to grind out of studio don't tell my girl i was homeless was wasting the time that we could have spent too focused not folding i'm used to this i'm not complaining but shit to get hard and i know what my worth is i waited my turn look at me flourish i want them to know what they're seeing right now was me beating my curses i only got one life to live we're not done first of all stay tuned we're about to go to Bass Pro, buy some tackle. Today was kind of like a warm up for what we're going to do tomorrow. So tomorrow, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do. It might slip out when we get to Bass Pro, but stay tuned until then because we are going to go to Bass Pro, buy some tackle. I kind of want to get an idea of what they would be eating on this time of year. I spent a lot of time last night watching some YouTube videos and stuff like that. Just because when I go and do what I want to do tomorrow, I want to be able to catch a lot of fish. So stay tuned. All right, guys, we have made it to Bass Pro. I really just need underspins and like a couple more swim baits because I lost the one head that I brought with me 
you know me leave it to me to be prepared and also i lost the swim bait so we need that stuff and then we're going to look around a little bit more just to see what else they have oh my goodness live bait vending machine shiners oh we might have to do a live bait thing i said i, I didn't want to do that but we might have to I just got a little bit of intel from one of the employees here and he was telling me that small jerk baits um, and like really finessey small profile stuff. Basically I came at the worst time of the year. He gave me a little bit of stuff for that. I kind of knew that coming into the trip that it was a bad time, but so I think what the plan for tomorrow is, it's gonna be like smaller stuff, like true finesse, um, Ned Rig small jerk baits, smaller underspan, so what I was throwing today. So we're gonna try to find some small stuff and then run with that tomorrow. So stay tuned. All right, boys, we got the goods for tomorrow. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video to see what we got and also see what we can catch on this stuff tomorrow. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Supposedly we're here at the worst time of the year, but we're gonna make the best of it and we're gonna try to catch a whole bunch of peacocks and maybe some snook. I got a snook spot and another tarpon spot. So. I've caught snook, I haven't caught tarpon. Tarpon's a big one on the bucket list. So hopefully we can maybe make that happen tomorrow. That'd be super cool, because I was not expecting to do that one on the way down here. So stay tuned, thanks for hanging out. Don't forget to fish them hard and have a great day. And don't forget what I do also. See y'all.